The air was warm, the sun was shining, and every pony in Ponyville was having a glorious day. The town square was bustling and crowded and busy ponies filled the streets. All the pony folks seemed to have somewhere specific to be. All except Rainbow Dash, her place was in the sky. She tore freely through the air, speeding one way and the next, buzzing the treetops and racing the wind. The blue pegasus swooped over a schoolyard, much to the delight of the children. Then climbed several hundred feet high and dove, streaking downward as fast as she could. Seconds before hitting the ground, her wings flew open and she pulled up back into the clear blue. Rainbow felt alive. Suddenly, Dash remembered that she had somewhere to be. She was supposed to meet with Pinkie Pie in five minutes. Dash had gotten so caught up in her exercises that she'd nearly forgotten that Pinkie had asked to meet her at Sugar Cube Corner at three. Pinkie hadn't said why or what they'd be doing, but Dash knew that with Pinky, it could be anything. Dash wasn't sure if she really wanted to go, though. She was so engaged with her stunts that she thought about blowing Pinky off to continue flying. But Dash's conscience got the better of her. She knew that it would hurt Pinky's feelings. After all, Pinky had said it was going to be something special just for the two of them. Dash considered it and thought, why not? What did she have to lose? Heck, it might be more pranking. Pinky might have found a bunch more fun stuff to pull on folks, and they'd had so much fun the last time. Dash kicked it into overdrive to make up for lost time and sped to her appointment. When Dash walked into the store, she was immediately greeted by her host, who was bouncing in excitement. Yay, you're here! I've been waiting all day! Sorry if I'm a little late, Pinky. I was doing my afternoon exercises and lost track of time. <laughs> oh, that's okay. They're here now. What's a few more minutes? I've been so excited thinking about all the fun stuff we're gonna do. I haven't stopped bouncing since I woke up. I mean, I almost forgot to breathe. I've been so happy. Dash gave a slightly uncomfortable laugh. She had always appreciated Pinkie Pie's friendly, outgoing way of life. Pinky's overabundant enthusiasm almost creeped her out. Dash maintained a polite expression, however. If Pinky was this worked up, whatever she had planned must be good. So you ready to get started, Rainbow Dash? I've got everything all ready! Dash psyched herself up. You betcha, Pinky. So what do you got planned? We gonna prank somebody? I got a couple of good ones I've been thinking about. Or maybe you've got some stunts you think I should try? Or perhaps... Pinky cupcakes! Baking? Dash was disappointed. Pinky, you know I'm not good at baking. Remember last time? Oh, that's not the problem at all. I only need your help making them. I'll be doing most of the work. Dash thought about it for a second. Well, all right. I guess that's okay. What exactly do you need me to do? That's the spirit. Here we go. Pinky handed Dash a cupcake. Dash was puzzled. I thought I was helping you bake. You will be. I made this one just for you before you got here. So, is this like taste testing or something? Sort of. Dash shrugged and popped the pastry in her mouth. She chewed a bit and swallowed. Not bad. Okay, now what? Now, you take a nap. <laughs> Puzzled, Dash opened her mouth but felt instantly lightheaded. A wave of dizziness washed over her. The world spun. And seconds later, she collapsed to the floor. When Dash regained consciousness, she found herself in a dark room. She tried to shake her head, but found that a taut leather strap held it firmly in place. She struggled to move, but braces around her chest and limbs glued her to a rack formed from a series of sturdy planks, which spread her legs wide apart. Dash's wings were the only part of her not tied down, and they fluttered frantically while she struggled to escape. As she writhed, Pinky jumped suddenly into her line of sight. Goody, you're awake! Now we can get started! She bounded into the darkness and quickly reappeared, pushing a small cart covered with a cloth. Pinky, what's going on? I can't move! Well, duh, that's because you're tied down! 
why you can't move. I didn't think you need to be told that. But why? What's happening? I thought you said I was going to help make cupcakes. You are helping. You see, I ran out of special ingredients and I need you to get more. Special ingredient? Dash was now breathing heavily and starting to panic. What special ingredient? You silly! Dash's eyes widened and her face contorted in fear. Whew, you really got me there, Pinkie Pie. I mean, tricking me into thinking I'm going to get made into a cupcake? I gotta tell you, this is the best prank yet. You win. You're the best. Pinky only giggled even more. Aw, thanks, Dash. But I haven't done any pranks today, so I can't accept your praise. Dash was struggling again. Pinky, come on. This isn't funny. Then why are you laughing? Before Dash could answer, Pinky grabbed the cloth and whipped it off the cart. On the cart was a tray containing various sharp medical tools and knives, carefully organized and wickedly sharp, as well as a large medical bag. Dash was now in full panic mode. She was starting to hyperventilate. Her mind raced as she tried to reason with the pink pony. You can't do this, Pinky. I'm your friend. I know you are, and that's why I'm so happy I got you here. We get to share your last moments together, just you and me. Pinky was skipping again. But the other ponies will wonder where I am. When the clouds pile up, they'll come looking for me. And then you'll get found out. Oh, Dash, don't worry. There are plenty of Pegasus ponies that take care of a few clouds. And besides, no one will find out. I mean, how long do you think I've been doing this? And with that ominous statement, the light suddenly came to life and revealed the rest of the room. Oh, no. Dash reeled in horror at the image presented to her. The room was decorated with a typical but twisted Pinkie Pie flare. Colorful streamers of dried entrails fluttered around on the ceiling. Brightly painted skulls of all sizes were attached to the walls, and organs done up in pastels filled with helium were tied to the backs of chairs. The tables and chairs were made up of bones and the preserved flesh of past ponies. Dash cringed upon seeing the centerpiece of the table nearest to her. The heads of four foals, their eyes closed as if they were sleeping, were wearing party hats made from their own skin. With a thrill of terror, Dash recognized one of them as Apple Bloom's classmate, Twist. Dash's eyes darted back and forth and then fell upon a patchwork banner hanging from the rafters. Made from several tanned pony hides, the words, life is a party, were scrawled on it in blood. Dash's attention was brought back by a party horn unfurling and tickling her nose. She gaped at Pinkie Pie, who was standing right in front of her. The party pony was wearing a dress quilted from dried skin and blazoned with cutie marks. On her back fluttered six Pegasus wings, all of different colors. As the earth pony skipped in excitement, her necklace of severed unicorn horns clacked together loudly. Like it? I made it myself. Desperately, Dash pleaded with the smiling pony before her. Pinky, please. I'm sorry if I did anything to you. I didn't mean it. Please, let me go. I promise I won't tell anybody. Oh, Dash, you didn't do anything. It's just that your number came up. And, well, I don't make the rules. We can't turn back now. Dash was tearing up. How could this be happening? Oh, Dash, don't be sad. This will cheer you up. I made you a friend. Seemingly, out of nowhere, Pinky produced a brightly painted blue and yellow skull. It was about pony sized, but it had a very defining feature a beak. Dash gasped in shock. Is that. Hey, Dash, let's hang together. These ponies are lamos. Sweeps, sweeps, sweeps. I caught her right before she left town. Remember when I left the party for about 20 minutes? That wasn't enough time to play with her, of course. I have to wait till after the party to do that. But boy, am I glad I did. It was worth it for the flavor alone. Griffins taste like two animals at once. It's amazing. I know she didn't have a number like everyone else in Ponyville, but... When was I going to get another chance to try a griffin? 
I probably should have asked where she came from so I could have gotten more, but I forgot. I'll tell you what though, she was quite the fighter. She lasted a long time, which was a lot of fun for me. I got the chance to play with somebody other than a pony and try new things. It's too bad she had such a meanie mouth. She said so much bad stuff, I had to take her tongue out. You know, bad language makes for bad feelings, Rainbow Dash. Dash didn't have anything to say. She just sobbed and writhed in her tight bonds. Well, that's enough reminiscing. It's time to begin. Putting down Gilda's skull, the pink pony gripped a scalpel in the cleft of her hoof and walked over to Dash's right flank. Without any flair, Pinky placed the blade an inch above Dash's cutie mark and began a circular cut around it. Dash shouted in pain and tried desperately to pull away, but the braces held her still. Finishing the incision, Pinky grabbed a curved skinny knife from the tray. Screwing up her face in concentration, she worked it under Dash's skin and sliced the hide away from the muscle. Dash ground her teeth as she tearfully watched her flesh peel off. Pinky then moved to the other side and repeated the process on Dash's left flank. Once she had finished, Pinky held up both cutie marks in front of her friend and started waving them like pom-poms. Dash just whimpered. Her thighs burned like nothing she had felt before. Placing the ragged patches of skin down, Pinky selected a large butcher knife and walked behind the blue pegasus. Hmm. I hope you don't mind. I think I'm gonna wing it now. <laughs> She grabbed Dash's left wing in her mouth and played with it for a few seconds, yanking it back so the sharp pain reignited the fire in Dash's flanks. Then, stretching the wing out, Pinky brought the blade down hard at the base. Instantly, Dash screamed and thrashed her appendage. The movement threw off Pinky's aim. She tried to hit the mark again, but missed and carved a huge slice into Dash's back. Dash, you gotta stay still or I'm gonna keep missing. Pinky took another whack and hit her target. She swung again and again, blood sprayed into the air, but Pinky realized she wasn't getting anywhere. The blade just wasn't going through the bone. Hmm, I guess I forgot to sharpen it. I'll try something else. She tossed the knife over her shoulder, embedding the blade in the table. Through the haze of pain and tears, Dash heard the sound of a metal box opening and closing. Got it! See, Dash, why did I call it a hacksaw? It doesn't hack. Hacking is what I do with a knife. This is a saw. I don't get it. Pinky placed the tool over the mangled flesh of the last attempt. Standing on her hind legs, she worked the saw back and forth with her front hooves. It sliced effortlessly through the bone and skin. The feeling of the jagged teeth grinding into her made Dash want to vomit. She watched numbly as her wing flew over her head and landed with a fluff on the table. Pinky moved to the next wing and started sawing. Dash didn't struggle this time. She'd given up trying to fight and focused on choking back screams of agony. Abruptly, the sawing paused. Pinky was only halfway done, the wing hanging off by a sliver. Hey Dash, think fast. Suddenly, Pinky yanked the wing as hard as she could. The bone snapped, but the blue pony skin held, then tore away. The pull whipped away a long strip of flesh all the way down Dash's back to her rump. Her body seized at the unexpected trauma. As her pelvis tensed up, Dash felt a warm release between her legs, and her loud, unending melody of pain filled the room. Unable to catch her breath, she blacked out. Dash awoke with a gasp. The stench of her urine filled her mucus cake nostrils. Dash awoke with a gasp. The stench of her urine filled her mucus caked nostrils. As her vision swam into focus, she saw a very pouty pinky pie removing a large adrenaline needle from her chest. Stomping her hooves, the frustrated Pinky lashed out at her helpless victim. Didn't anybody teach you any manners? 
It's very rude to fall asleep when somebody invites you to spend some time with them. How would you like it if I came over to your house and went to sleep? Oh, I'm sorry, Dash. You're so boring, I think I'll take a nap. You think I like always doing this by myself? I told you how excited I got when I found you were next. I was excited to have a friend be here with me while I worked. But no, you got to be inconsiderate. You know, I thought you were tough. I thought you could handle it. I had both stand up better than you. Do I have to baby you, huh? Is that how you want me to remember you as a baby? As Pinky stopped to catch her breath, Dash blinked and sobbed softly. Her back was in agony, her sides were on fire, and there was an intense pain in one of her legs. As she blinked again, she saw Pinky pop something red into her mouth and began to chew. Noticing Dash's stare, Pinky quickly gulped the morsel down. This? She held up another piece. Well, while you were asleep, I got a little impatient and held myself to a small sample. I got it from your leg. You're not bad. Wanna try some? Without waiting for a response, Pinky shoved the strip of meat into the revolted Pegasus Pony's mouth. Dash gagged and immediately spit it out. Pinky frowned and picked up the chunk of flesh. If you didn't want it, you could have said no. She contemplated the discarded snotty morsel, then gulped it up. It's not like you haven't had my cupcakes before. Swallowing, Pinky turned her attention to a small can on the tray. She removed the lid, revealing that it was filled with red-hot coals. Lying on top of the coals were several large nails. As the adrenaline filled her veins, Dash began to panic again. Picking up the can, Pinky walked over to Dash's left. Holding some tongs with her mouth, Pinky carefully picked up a nail and positioned it at the seam between her victim's front left leg and hoof. She then grabbed a hammer and took careful aim. No, Pinky! No! No! The hammer came down and the nail punctured Dash's skin. The white hot burning was too much. Dash screamed as she pulled and thrashed at the braces, causing her raw skin to rub and tear. Pinky tried to line up another nail, but couldn't find her aim, and let out a frustrated grunt. When Pinky brought the hammer back to take a wild swing, Dash burst out crying and begging. Please stop! Please, please stop! Pinky rolled her eyes. Putting down the hammer and tongs, she walked back in front of her friend and stared pensively at the broken Pegasus. Gilda didn't even cry this much when she had a live pair of Sprite stuffed down her throat. Pinky thought for a minute about what to do next. Then, had a sudden spark of inspiration. Rotating a wheel on the rack, Pinky laid Dash on her back, then moved to Dash's hind legs, bringing the can with her. Picking up her tools, Pinky drove a searing hot spike of metal directly into the bottom of Dash's hoof. As Dash yelled in pain, Pinky moved around and drove a second nail into the other hoof. Next, Pinky went back to her cart and located an enormous battery and controller, which she dragged over to where she was working. She tied copper wires between the terminals and the nails driven into Dash's hooves, then gave Dash a wink and flipped the switch. Electricity rocketed through Dash's body. The blue pony reacted immediately. Her body seized and her muscles snapped taut. Dash's hips thrusted skyward. Her eyes rolled back and she let out a deep, throat-shredding cry. Pinky giggled and danced in place, then reached down and turned up the juice. Dash convulsed uncontrollably, and her bladder emptied once more. After about five minutes, Pinky shut off the power. Wisps of steam rose from the singed fur around Dash's hooves, and the area reeked of cooked flesh and burnt enamel. Pinky rotated Dash upright again and tried to snap the drooling, delirious pony back to attention. Dash? Dash? Rainbow Dash, wake up! Dash moaned and managed to give a modicum of weak acknowledgement. Pinky studied her handiwork, then reached into the medicine bag and produced a large syringe. All right, time for the last round. 
Dash focused blearily on the needle, which Pinky took as a question as to what it was. This is a little something to take the pain away. She walked around to her victim's back. Dash flinched as Pinky jabbed the needle into the lower part of the blue pony's spine. Moving in front of her friend again, Pinky leaned down and elaborated. In a few minutes, you won't be able to feel anything below your ribcage. Then you'll be able to stay awake and watch the harvest. Dash started to cry again. Pinky? Yeah? I want to go home. Yeah, I could see you wanting to do that. Sometimes I just want to give up. Just say, I'm done with this mess, and go to bed. But you know what? You shouldn't shrug off your responsibilities. You got to pull yourself up and meet the challenges head on. That's the only way you're going to get ahead in life. Dash hung her head and cried. Minutes passed as the drug took effect. Eventually, Dash was completely numb from her chest to her flanks. At this point, Pinky approached with a scalpel. Glancing at Dash and smiling, Pinky made a long horizontal cut across the Pegasus Pony's pelvis, just above her crotch. Moving up Dash's body, Pinky made a similar incision under her ribs. Finally, Pinky made a long vertical cut down Dash's stomach, connecting the first two. Looks like I got my eye on you, Dash. <laughs> With a moist, gooey sound, the flaps of skin opened. The sight of her own organs and the lack of feeling caused Dash's breathing to intensify. Pinky carefully sliced open Dash's abdominal sac and grabbed her large intestines. As she separated the organ from the rest of the digestive tract and pulled it out of the new cavity, Pinky grew jovial. Laughing as she gutted her friend, Pinky began to make jokes. Dash, growing weaker from this new source of blood loss, tried desperately to shut out the macabre comedy act. Pinky laughed, slinging the intestinal tube around her neck and spraying blood in all directions. Isn't my new scarf so pretty? Reaching back inside, she sliced the small intestine off from the bowels. Squeezing out the excess excrement, Pinky filed the slimy organ through her teeth and dragged it back and forth. That's just to say you gotta floss every day, Dash. Dash was barely aware of what was going on anymore. The shock was causing her to fade. Disappointed, Pinky dived back into the blue pony's guts, ramping up her routine. Oh, don't go yet, Dash. Pinky started pulling out the rest of Dash's organs, pausing with each remover. I know it can be a real pancreas, but you know I'm just kidding with you. You really got to learn to liver it up. Boy, these jokes are getting bladder. Guess you gotta develop a stomach for them! <laughs> Pinky placed the discarded body parts into a bucket, keeping the last one for a bit longer. Oh, bagpipes. She said, placing the end of Dash's esophagus in her mouth and the stomach in her armpit. She squeezed and a spurt of acid hit her tongue. Ew! Oh, hey look! Your cupcake, Dash! Dash didn't hear her tormentor. She had slipped from consciousness minutes ago. Pinky, not yet satisfied, hit Dash with another adrenaline shot. Dash woke up for the last time, her heart pounding. Warm blood flowed out from the wound in her chest in great spurts. It wouldn't be long now. Pinky brought Dash around onto her back again and straddled the blue pony's chest, scalpel at the ready. You know, Rainbow Dash, I'm disappointed. I thought you would have lasted longer. I really wanted to spend more time with you before we got here. But I guess it's my fault. I should have taken it a little slower. Oh well. It was really nice knowing you, Dash. The blade sunk into the blue throat and worked its way up to Dash's chin. Coming back down, Pinky's scalpel then circled Dash's neck. The last thing Rainbow Dash felt was her skin being cut away from her skull and the metal of the blade scraping her teeth. Then she was gone. Pinkie Pie stared into the mirror. She had done a really good job even keeping the eyelids. She winked and Dash winked back. Pinkie smiled. But still, she was sad that her friend was now gone. Dash had only lasted 50 minutes, not nearly as long as Pinkie had wanted. She looked back at the cadaver hanging in the center of the room. 
The last of her friend's fluids draining into a pan. Yep, no more Rainbow Dash. As she looked, Pinky cocked her head. She began to take notice of the fact that there really wasn't much damage to the corpse. In fact, I think... An idea exploded into her head. She was good at sewing, and she had all the pieces. All she had to do was put them back together. Yeah, she just had to get some stuffing, and bingo, she'd have Rainbow Dash forever. In fact, thought Pinky, that's what she'd do for all her best friends when their numbers came up. She was so excited, she skipped right over to the body with her skinner to get started. The cupcakes could wait. Pinkie Pie had a friend to make. The air was warm. <clears throat> Ugh, fuck. <clears throat> but Dash's conscience could do... Pinkie might have found a bunch more fun stuff to pull on folks, and they'd have so much... They had... Oh, fuck. But Dash's conscience got the better of her. She knew that it would hurt Pinky's feelings at... God, it's that fucking one. Oh, that! You're here now! Ugh. I haven't stopped bouncing since I... Ugh. Yeah! So ready to get started, Rainbow Dash? I got everything all right... What was that? <laughs> uh, recording stuff is hard for creepy pastas. Making cupcakes! Oh, God. <laughs> As she writhed, Pinky jumped suddenly into her line of sight. It's writhed, right? Raved. Fuck! As she raved... Oh, it's writhed. I was right! God damn it. I know! Yeah. What was that? Oh, Dash. Don't worry! There are plenty of Pegasus ponies to take a few... Ugh. And organs done up in pastel... Pastels? Fuck! Just your number came up, and well, I don't make the rules. I just turn back... Oh no, don't tell me... Okay. No! I have to find the page where I was at. Okay, how am I gonna do that? Okay, blue and yellow skull. It was... Oh no! Scolded Pinky as her... Fuck. Gotta say, Dash, why do they call me of the... As Dash yelled in pain, Pinky moved around and drove a second nail into the other hoof. Ow. Pinky giggled and danced in place, then reached down and turned up the juice. Fuck. Wisps of steam rose from the singed fur around Dash's hooves, and the area ri... Fuck! Okay. <clears throat> Pinky informed Dash as she walked around to her... Wait, that felt wrong. Pinky informed Dash as she walked around to her victim's ruined back. Fuck. Words are hard, guys. This is a little something to take a... P the. That's the only way you're gonna... The. That's a little... The. The, 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 the. As she separated the organ from the rest of the... Di <laughs> Winnie. As she separated the organ from the rest of the... Di why am I stumbling on the? The digestive. Rest of the digestive. God damn it, Kyle. Hey, kids. Don't murder your friends. Anyway. Hey, guys. Do you like our content? Do you want to support the show? Click the link in the description below to visit our donation page. All proceeds go towards new and better equipment and games you want to see us play. Everyone who donates will get a special shout out at the end of future videos, and we're currently working on setting up some special perks for you. If you don't want to donate, that's okay too. You can support us by subscribing and clicking that bell icon so you get notified whenever we put out a new video. Thank you so much for checking out today's story. A huge thank you to my friends Izumi Yukimura and Kyle Sheridan for helping me out today. Make sure to give them some love. Links in the description down below. If you'd like to check out yesterday's story, click that box on the left. Or, if you'd like to see something a little different, click that box on the right to check out our latest Let's Voice Act series. Thanks for watching! Stay creepy, everybody!